Welcome to Jyoti Hydroponic Farm videos. Let's get started to get better at farming. In our previous videos, we learned about how to set up our polyhouse for our hydroponic system. And today, we'll be learning about how to wash and buffer our cocoa peat when we are into commercial type of farming. So, let's move forward and grab all the information about it. As you can see here, we customized these containers ourselves. So as per your requirement, you can do the same. Here, we got hold of two containers, which we covered with insect net as a strainer from the inside. And the reason why we covered it from the inside is just because so that when we add cocoa peat bricks to it, with the support of this cocoa peat bricks in the container, the strainers that are being placed inside the container are supported perfectly and after we add these cocoa peat bricks into this container we wash it with ro water only i again repeat we wash it with ro water only the only reason why we do this is to get the same tds of the strained water coming out of this container has to match the TDS of RO water. So when we have this data collected, that is when we are able to match the strained water of this cocoa peat with the RO water, that means our cocoa peat has been washed perfectly. And this we are doing for the initial setup only because we want our plants to be compatible with cocoa peat because we are bringing our plants from soil and then transferring it to the cocoa peat so we'll be getting the baby plants compatible with cocoa peat first and then transfer it to our main hydroponic system so we need to be very careful here when we wash our cocoa peat for our first plants to make it compatible with cocoa peat so as you can see here, these people, they are very happy here and washing cocoa peat. I'll not forward the video here so that you get the clear picture how we are doing it. So it's not rocket science here. It's simply, I would say, it's a kind of flexible approach to problem solving that we have used using the limited resources in an innovative way, I would say. So they are now crushing all the cocoa peat that they are adding to this container. These people, they are very hardworking people now. Here. Um, they, I just taught them once and after, after that they had the com complete information about it and they were easily able to grab all the information and they did it accordingly that we wanted. So first stage is to only wash your cocoa peat and make sure the TDS of the strained water of this cocoa peat is equal to the TDS of the RO water. So it's being washed thoroughly now. It's not a rocket science, people say they feel as if it's very hectic, but using different strategies, you can make the work very tedious, hectic free. So it depends on even on your uh, thinking capability as well, how you can do it. So I like this, I mean, covering the complete container with the insect net from the inside and then adding cocoa peat to it and then washing it off so that none of our cocoa peats can be uh, wasted and here only the dirty water and the residues which are not good for plants they are being washed off completely and strained out uh, from the uh, insect net and rest cocoa peat remains as it is now we'll collect this strained water uh, to check the TDS We'll insert TDS meter in the strained water now. 
Now the TDS that is coming up, that is around 377 ppm. So we need to wash it still because our RO water TDS is approximately 10 to 15. So we need to be somewhere between 10 to 15 only so that we get the clear picture about how perfectly we have washed our cocoa bean. So this is the complete dirt that has come up, that has come out of the cocoa peat after washing. Now the first container is still in, still being washed with the RO water, and the other outlet of the RO water is being transferred to the next container. So both of them they are going simultaneously. I'll show you, uh, here the water is coming out very slowly, but still uh, we have installed a big motor wherein we have collected a huge amount of RO water so that we can easily wash uh, our cocoa peat in the later stage of the video. I'll show you the same. So here, this is, this is only the first time that we are doing it here. So to increase the fast process of doing it, we just took time to wash it perfectly so here that's the reason why we used very slow flow of uh, washing our cocoa peat so that it's washed perfectly so the first thing for installing first time plants in our cocoa peat we are washing it very properly and very precisely we'll check the TDS once again so I just sent him back again to collect the strained water now the TDS is coming up around I would say uh, it'll come up around 100 something it's coming up 190 91 90 190 ppm so we need to still wash it because we want to make it same as uh, the RO water TDS so we'll check the TDS of the first container now which we started washing initially so let's see what it shows Just ask him to collect the water now and now he'll just check it out okay wonderful it's coming up 11 now as you can see it's coming up 11 so it's between 10 to 15 so that means the cocoa peat has been washed perfectly now this first level of washing cocoa peat has been completed and it's perfectly done because this in this cocoa peat our plants would be installed the first time. So we, may, we need to make sure that we have the perfect cocoa peat for our hydroponic system at the initial stage. So from here, what they'll be doing is they'll be just transferring this container cocoa peat to the bioflow that we had made. So it will be directly transferred there. And there we'll make sure that it's being soaked for 24 hours in calcium nitrate solution so that we can loosen the potassium bond with the cocoa peat. I'll show you the same as well how we did it. So right now he's transferring the complete cocoa peat from the containers to the bioflow. This is how he's doing it. So what we did was we made this bioflow just next to our containers and then we just transferred it from containers to the uh, bioflow. Now here these are the RO tanks that we use for washing and uh, here this is the pump here that we have installed for later stage to wash our cocoa peat because this would give a very high pressure to wash our cocoa peat later on.
as i said the ideas come only after you are into some work unless until you are not into it we won't get any ideas so when we watched it we got to know that the pressure is very low so because of that we installed this motor this is the same motor for the drip system so we used this motor for washing our coco peat in the initial stage he's now just transferring it he'll just empty both the both the containers in this bioflock if you are really planning to get your profession changed and you are planning to get into farming so i'll suggest you to be very specific with your work so both the containers they are empty now now our guy he'll just go ahead and make sure that the complete coco peat is leveled properly in the bioflow so that when we sprinkle calcium nitrate solution onto it it's spread it evenly after that so that's the reason why he'll why he'll uh, level the complete coco peat bed in the spire flow so he is now leveling it so we we need to make sure that our coco peat is spread properly in a even manner mm, not like uh, one part is up and another part is low not like that it has to be spread evenly in the spire flow definitely this farming is smart farming but some points we have to be a little bit labor uh, it's little bit labor in intensive i would say so make sure that you are ready to get this done in front of your eyes because we don't want any worker to avoid any step while uh, washing and buffering your coco peat because this is the initial stage of planting a plant so the first step of hydroponic system has to be very precise we cannot neglect any step here so now it has been leveled here the other guy again is using his hands to level it still getting any kind of help really helps now after it's leveled properly we are now sprinkling the calcium nitrate solution onto this washed coco peat we need to make sure that it is sprinkled properly so that each particle of coco peat takes the calcium nitrate and after taking this calcium nitrate this helps the coco peat to loosen the potassium bond with it because the potassium bond with the uh, coco peat it's very strong so we need to lose it and this can be only loosened either with the magnesium or calcium solution only so after we sprinkle this we'll cover this complete bioflow and leave it for 24 hours and after leaving it for 24 hours we'll again wash it and now i'll show you how we did the second part of washing after uh, sprinkling calcium nitrate that was the best part because we just changed the idea of washing coco peat there it also saved lot of time of ours instead of keeping this coco peat and anywhere and then washing it, it it becomes very hectic so use a strainer to wash it so that makes the work very easy 
Now we are just covering it. We'll leave it for 24 hours here. And after leaving it for 24 hours, we, transfer, we transferred it back to the containers. And now have a look here what we are doing. With the help of that motor that I showed you earlier, we used that and we stored the RO water. And now we are using this RO water to wash our coco peat completely. This is the way we did it. And we were easily able to wash our coco peat at one go at a very fast pace. So later on, after we washed our coco peat, uh, I mean, when we used different coco peat to be washed, we washed it here itself. And then we also sprinkled calcium nitrate solution here in the strained containers only. We left it for 24 hours and then we again washed it here itself. So there was not a big difference. It was very easy after that because uh, when we, we just did this once and tested it out and that was very much perfect. So rather than transferring it here and there, just wash it here with the RO water and then uh, apply calcium nitrate sprinklers onto this um, washed cocoa peat and then again wash it here itself and then transfer it to your poly house and you are ready to go. And also these people, they have enjoyed like anything while doing this. They got a chance to have, take a bath in Naro water. <laughs> so even it's very enjoyable. You have an adventure kind of year. So these people, they were very happy while washing it because this was the first time they were doing it. So still, you'll have to be very careful while doing this because we don't want our cocoa peat to be sent in the poly house for our hydroponic system without washing and buffering. So we need to make sure that our coco peat is washed properly, buffered properly and then washed again. So in the next stage, I'll show you how we have used this coco peat and what we'll be doing with this coco peat and how we'll be installing the plants in this so that our hydroponic system gives us the maximum output of the plants that we are installing in this coco peat. So I hope this has cleared a little bit of your doubts of washing and buffering and then again washing your coco peat. So we'll end this session here and see you in the next session. Till then, goodbye and have a nice time. Thank you.